toxic and negative individuals, he who has a why to live can bear almost any how. Friedrich Nietzsche, while not a Stoic, this quote aligns with the Stoic idea of focusing on what matters dishonest individuals. The first and greatest victory is to conquer yourself. Plato Drama Mongers If you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it, and this you have the power to revoke at any moment Marcus Aurelius' complainers and victims. The soul becomes dyed with the color of its thoughts. Marcus Aurelius Energy Vampires No person has the power to have everything they want, but it is in their power not to want what they don't have and to cheerfully put to good use what they do have. Seneca Gossips and Rumor Mongers Silence is a lesson learned through life's many sufferings. Seneca Manipulative and Controlling Individuals The more we value things outside our control, the less control. We have Epictetus. These quotes can be effectively integrated into your video to support your message about the importance of avoiding certain types of people. While drawing on stoic wisdom, please like and subscribe support my channel. The cold cerebral rhetoric of characters such as Caesar and Brutus in Julius. Caesar reflects the stoic philosophy, which emphasizes restraint and reason as a means to avoid emotional suffering. Stoicism was a school of Hellenistic philosophy that flourished across the Roman and Greek world until the 3rd century. Ace, Stoicism taught that contentment lies in accepting events as they come, without being swayed by distracting emotions, as these lead to grave errors of judgment. In this vein, events are divided into two categories, events that happen outside of an individual's control and events that an individual can influence on his or her own. Famous Stoics, such as Epictetus and Seneca, insisted that only by rigorously exercising control over controllable matters and disassociating from the uncontrollable can one achieve peace of mind and remain untouched by misfortune. This dichotomy forms a central theme within the play and also informs several of the characters' uniquely restrained moods and styles. Many of the ideas the characters discuss are central topics in Stoic philosophy, such as whether events are governed by fate or free will, whether we should fear death and how much we should mourn those who have died. When Calpurnia urges Caesar to stay home and not make an appearance at the Senate because she fears the symbolism of dreams and omens, Caesar responds in a typical Stoic fashion. It seems most strange to me that men should fear, seeing that death, a necessary end, will come when it will come. E.I. Calmly. Caesar emphasizes the futility of fearing something that he cannot personally influence. Death, as Caesar sees it, is simply an uncontrollable event. It must happen, though the time and place are arbitrarily determined. Stoicism therefore tells him that he must ignore the pesky emotions associated with the idea of death. The unhurried and dignified diction here perfectly characterizes the repression of feeling that his philosophy teaches. Calfarina's fear is irrational and strange to Kieser. Even though he concedes at first to stay home and ease her mind, Brutus's manner of thought and speech also reads as archetypically stoic. When he reveals to Cassius and Messala that Portia has committed suicide by swallowing hot coals, there is very little in his use of language to express the devastation he must feel. Why farewell Portia? We must die. Masala with meditating that she must die. Once I have patience to endure it now. Brutus rationalizes Portia's passing as inevitable and subdues his sorrow with cold reason, just as a disciplined Stoic is taught to do. The calamity of his wife's suicide is thereby reduced merely to a matter of endurance. Once again, the diction is calm and reasoned and makes no obvious reference to either grief or despair. Ironically, it is this disregard, or downright suppression, a feeling that leads to the worst judgment errors in the play. In the end, Stoicism, as a philosophy and way of life, proves too rigid and strict for the sweeping political flux of Julius Caesar's Rome. Stoicism was one of the dominant philosophical systems of the Hellenistic period. The name derives from the porch Stoa, Poikile and the Agora at Athens decorated with mural paintings, where the first generation of Stoic philosophers congregated and lectured. 
The school of thought founded there long outlived the physical Athenian porch and notably enjoyed continued popularity in the Roman period and beyond. This entry introduces the main doctrines and arguments of the three parts of Stoic philosophy, physics, logic, and ethics, emphasizing their interlocking structure. We also review the history of the school, the extant sources for Stoic doctrine, and the Stoic's subsequent philosophical influence. The Stoic school was founded around 300 BCE by Zeno of Kidium, a voracious reader of Socratic dialogues, who also studied under the Cynic crates and was influenced by the teachings of Plato's Academy and the Megarian school. The Stoa competed with the school founded only a little before in Athens by Epicurus, and Stoic and Epicurean views are often compared and contrasted. Zeno was succeeded in the leadership of the Stoa first, by Cleanthes of Assos and then by Chrysippus of Soli, who headed the school from around 230 until 206 BCE and was by all accounts its foremost theorist and systematizer. Following Chrysippus, the position of scholar Carr passed to his former students, the last of which being Diogenes of Babylon in the middle of the 2nd century BCE. Some scholars see this moment as marking a shift in the Stoic school, from the so-called Old Stoa to Middle Stoicism, Though the relevance and accuracy of this nomenclature is debated, see Inwood 2022, the latter term is nonetheless frequently used to encompass the work of Stoic philosophers in the 2nd and 1st centuries BCE. A significant feature of the 2nd century is the sharp and powerful attacks against Stoic views for. By the academic Carnides, to which Antipater of Tarsus, Diogenes's successor, responded at length. Diogenes and Antipater also heralded increased engagement with Platonic Sedley 2003, Radom's Schils, 1999, and possibly Aristotelian doctrine, arguably peaking with Panatius. In the second half of 2nd century BCE and his student Posidonius in the 1st century BCE, for developments from Antipater onwards, see in Wood, 2022, for the contributions of Panatius and Posidonius, and their relation to previous thinkers, see Tielemann, 2007. Stoicism became particularly fashionable in the Roman period. Although never identifying as a Stoic himself, Cicero, who studied philosophy in Athens and endeavored to popularize it at Rome, engaged extensively with Stoic theory in his philosophical works and modeled his on proper functions, De Officiis, on Panaetius's treatise of the same name. During the imperial era, several prominent public figures were associated with the Stoic school. Appointed to the court of Emperor Augustus in the late 1st century BCE was the Stoic philosopher Arius Didymus, and a generation later Seneca served as advisor to Nero. Epictetus, a former slave, was expelled from Rome by Domitian, along with other philosophers in 93 CE, and his works, recorded by his student Arian, heavily influenced. Marcus Aurelius, Roman Emperor from 161-180, c. also active in the 2nd century, c. was the Stoic philosopher Hierocles, whose detailed treatise on psychology and ethical theory, The Elements of Ethics, is partially extant, c. Romelli 2009 over this remarkable span of time, during which the Stoic school operated in some form or another, evolutions in views and shifts in focus unsurprisingly took place. The nature and extent of these intra-school developments and disagreements, some of which we will consider below, remains the subject of ongoing scholarly debate. Stoic philosophy was, from Zeno onwards, conceived of as comprising three parts, physics, physike, logic, logike, and ethics, ethike. Each of these parts includes a wide array of further topics, nowadays dealt with separately. Logic, for example, includes not only formal logic but also questions now typically falling under the remit of philosophy of language, epistemology, and philosophy of mind. In addition, all three parts of philosophy were thought by the Stoics to work together to form an interconnected and coherent system. Exactly how strongly the claim of systematization is to be taken is disputed. It never ceases to amaze me. We all love ourselves more than other people, but care more about their opinion than our own. 
Too many people believe that everything must be pleasurable in life. Extravagance is its own destroyer. Love sometimes injures. Friendship always benefits. After friendship is formed, you must trust, but before that, you must judge Seneca. Having the fewest wants, I am nearest to the gods. Socrates' man is mostly a collection of emotions, most of which he would do better not to be feeling Neil Burton. Imagine smiling after a slap in the face. Then think of doing it 24 hours a day. Warriors should suffer their pain silently. Aaron Hunter. Waste no more time arguing what a good man should be. B1. You could leave life right now. Let that determine what you do and say and think. He who fears death will never do anything worth of a man who is alive. Seneca. Life is very short and anxious for those who forget the past, neglect the present, and fear the future. Seneca. How long are you going to wait before you demand the best for yourself, Epictetus? Don't explain your philosophy, embody it. Epictetus. What man actually needs is not a tensionless state, but rather, the striving and struggling for some goal worthy of him. Man conquers the world by conquering himself. Zeno of Sidium. It is not the man who has too little that is poor, but the one who hankers after more. Lucius Aeneas, Seneca. If it is not right, do not do it. If it is not true, do not say it. A gem cannot be polished without friction, nor a man perfected without trials. Seneca. Sometimes in life we must fight, not only without fear, but also without hope. Problems only exist in the human mind. Discomfort is the currency of success. Keep your intention pure. Emotions will try to distract you. So keep going. That's the cure. A stoic is someone who transforms fear into prudence, pain into transformation, mistakes into initiation and desire into undertaking. Be so busy building your own life that other people's bullshit is of no concern. In life, it doesn't matter what happens to you or where you came from. It matters what you do with what happens and what you've been given. Difficulty is what wakes up the genius. Common man's patience will bring him more happiness than common man's power. You will also enjoy our article on Complete works by Stoic philosophers that survive are those by writers of imperial times, Seneca, Epictetus, and Marcus Aurelius, as well as by lesser-known authors such as Cornutus, Cleomedes, and Hierocles, discussed in Inwood 2022. Seneca, Epictetus, and Marcus focus to a significant degree on ethics and only sparingly present the wide and extensive theoretical basis of the system for their views on logic see Barnes 1997. These later Stoics also had philosophical agendas of their own, so that their work might not always straightforwardly reflect the views of for detailed information about the old Stoa. We have to depend on either later doxographies, including Diogenes Laertius's Encyclopedia, account in Book 7 of his Lives of Eminent Philosophers, Pseudo-Plutarch's Philosopher's Opinions on Nature, Placita, and Stobios' Excerpts, Eclogai, and their sources, Aetius Circarisci, C and Arius Didymus, Eerst C, BC, C, or other philosophers who discuss the Stoics for their own purposes. Nearly all of the latter group are hostile witnesses. Among them are the Aristotelian commentator Alexander of Aphrodisias, late second C, C, who criticizes the Stoics in on mixture and on fate and contrasts their views piecemeal with those of Aristotle in other works. The Platonist, Plutarch, Worst Twend, C, C, who authored anti-Stoic tracts, such as on Stoic self-contradictions and against the Stoics on common conceptions. The medical writer Galen, second C, C, the Peronian skeptic, Sextus Empiricus, second C, C, who sharply criticizes most aspects of the Stoic system and in so doing provides detailed reports of Stoic doctrine. The Neoplatonist Plotinus, 3rd C.C., the Christian bishops Eusebius, 3rd 4th C, C., Nemesius, circa 400 Tlamwen C., and the 6th century Neoplatonist commentator Simplicius. Another important source is Cicero, Rist C. B.C.E. Though his own philosophical position derives from that of his teacher, Philo of Larissa and the New Academy, 
Cicero is not without sympathy for what he sees as the high moral tone of Stoicism. In his philosophical works, especially on academic skepticism, on the nature of the gods, and on moral ends, de finibus, he provides summaries in Latin, with critical discussion, of Stoic views. See also the entry on the doxography of ancient philosophy, their predecessors.